In 2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Sir. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 you're fine. No, fine. Here, let me adjust my makeup. Yeah, all right. All right, well, uh, welcome to another episode of Red Tool House. Um, we're going to do something a little different this time. Uh, instead of talking about what we've got going on on the farm, we're over about 20 miles away from our place to my brother's place. Actually, 20 minutes, not 20 miles. 20 minutes. I was say, did we move? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it gets further away sometimes. We're having a little yeah. logs. It seems like it's forever. Exactly. So my brother's, uh, my brother's place, this is my brother, Thad. Hello. And uh, so what we're doing, we've, we have got some good feedback uh, through the homesteading channels about what Thad's got going on here. He's not necessarily homesteading, but he's building a living history uh, village and garrison. So he's using a lot of building practices that we homesteaders would be uh, really excited to, to know and to utilize. And we've got great feedback from you guys as we kind of pinged you all on social media to say, hey, would you be interested in looking at this type of stuff? So uh, this is just kind of an intro. So what we'd like to do is, is kind of walk you through some of the stuff, what that's got going on here, where he is right now. But we're really going to encourage you guys to use the comment section below to, to ask questions or to say, hey, uh, you, you shot something at, at minute 20 seconds, you shot something about this. Can you detail that a little bit more? Because that's the beauty of being close here and the fact right. that he's my brother, I can come back over obviously anytime and, and we can shoot. And as he goes through the winter, he, this is kind of his, his peak building time. So we can come through and document more of this. So, so again, use the comment section below to, to ask questions. We can come back and even you know, do a video answer of that and address those issues. Um, so, Thad, welcome and, and uh, appreciate you letting us come over and shoot. Well, thank you for welcoming me to my own house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to be here. We're in your house, but you're in my video. Jim. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Well, yeah, no, it's great to be here. And uh, I think we've got some real exciting things that are going on here that you guys might be interested in, some more than others others, but uh, we'll let you decide and uh, stay with us uh, throughout the next couple of years and see what we accomplish and what we don't accomplish. <laughs> Never built a garrison in a village before, but uh, we've got some really, really quality uh, craftsmen and uh, some dedicated people, I think, that'll, that'll make this project shine. And I think we're off to a good start. Well, let me ask you this, uh, and, and we'll kind of, as an overview, I know we're going to get into this a little bit more as we go through this this intro video. Kind of what's the, the core here? What, do you, what would you say the overall arching theme is as to why you're putting all this effort and energy into this? Because I've got two younger boys, um, age 12 and age 5, that uh, I want them to learn. And I noticed that um, as the generations pass, our older guys and gals have so much to teach us and are willing to teach us, but they're dying off. I want my kids to be a, uh, a genesis of, of this knowledge to pass to their kids and so that it's not lost. So uh, are we building cabins here um, just for something to do in the evenings? Yeah, kind of. But look at all the things that, that they can learn in this process. Well, some of the building practices that would overlap are um, pretty much all of them. I mean, when you look at these cabins, there's a lot of modern building techniques um, that, that, let's just say, will classify as modern, but, you know, where did they come from? The original homesteaders, you know, the original people that came across the Appalachian Mountains and, and had to come with very, very limited resources. Uh, really, the resources they had were, you know, the land and the abundance of timber. So, the building practices, you know, come from them. It directly coincides with the, um, the homesteading community, um, just because this is what it is. This is the original homesteading. Well, this building here is uh, just simply a, a soldier's cabin. 
and you notice it's a post and beam type construction. Um, and we've taken the designs from uh, the cabins that we've seen at a uh, historical site, uh, Fort Lawrence, Tennessee, where the, uh, the cabins were built post and beam with lap siding. The uh, siding isn't cut in an angle because they cut it with a pit saw. So we, we saw it with the uh, sawmill, the band mill. Uh, we don't build a cabin without a fireplace. It, to me, it's a storage shed. <laughs> if it doesn't have a fireplace, what's the point? So the fireplace you see in the background, I'll explain our, uh, our intent here. With the stone base, again, this is creek stone, um, came, came out of the creek behind us. We'll transition to daub and wattle, which basically will look like a little log cabin um, with the smaller round logs notched and then uh, all the way up through the roof towards the cap. The, the, the daub part of it is mortar or mud mixed with straw that we put in between each of the log segments there. We're cheating a little bit because we're using a clay flue. Um, that's simply this part here, um, which will give us a little bit of a heat sink area from our firebox to our wood uh, that'll keep us from uh, possibly having a chimney fire. This cabin sets on um, six by nine, six by 10 inch beams, and then smaller two inch dimensional to tie it together with two inch dimensional floor joists throughout. There is a center beam that's another uh, six inches thick and uh, nine, 10 inches tall. Without measuring it, I can't be exact. That beam runs across the width here and ties these two vertical posts together, which again is tied together with a center rafter system. So imagine if you would consecutive squares or rectangles, uh, which will allow you to build to infinity, even with um, you know uh, 12 or 13 foot allowances on your mill. So uh, of course we could go wider, we can definitely go longer as I just described, but a soldier's cabin wasn't a lap of luxury. In fact, this is probably a little bit more luxurious than a, a typical soldier or group of soldiers would, would allow. The foundation is simply stone, uh, creek stone. It's not mortared in, um, it's just stacked. And the reason for that is if you, if you do have a floor problem, you wanna get under it, you simply just pull the stone down and crawl under it. And You'll notice too that this cabin is floored with OSB, uh, oriated strand board that's uh, nailed directly to the rafters. We hide that uh, underneath the floor. This floor will be um, covered with uh, oak, um, half inch, or excuse me, uh, one inch thick oak boards. It'll cover the OSB uh, with a, uh, again, a roofing felt um, laminate in between the OSB and the oak. The length of the cabin is 12 foot and the, uh, the width is 10. And it is sturdy. It, the way it's built, you know, post and beam in you know, consecutive rectangles uh, or squares, depending on your dimensions, makes the structure very, very, very solid. Okay, so we've moved further down the meadow to another structure that um, if I were to place these structures in categories, I would have to say that this would be the most historically accurate structure um, and in a category of itself. However, there is a concrete pad poured in the center of this structure. Um, the foundation is all creek stone. The stone, of course, is a, um, a moisture barrier for, um, for all intents and purposes. It keeps the bottom logs from uh, pulling and wicking moisture up off the ground. And this is pretty common in 18th century um, construction. So <clears throat> your whole foundation outline is, uh, is dug and then river stone, um, field stone is placed in, in that foundation to keep your bottom row of logs from rotting out. All the logs here have been stripped by hand. Um, they're notched and uh, you notice there's no doors or window openings yet because it, uh, we've found just through trial and error that it's better to put those uh, openings in after the fact. Um, it's a whole lot easier to keep the logs straight and, uh, and your openings plumb and square if you go back and, uh, and saw through the logs. Um, this will be a period blacksmith shop. Um, it'll be uh, powered by a giant bellows, uh, double acting bellows. 
that uh, blows air when it expands and contracts. So it's actually two um, bellows that are stuck together and this being the firebox, um, it'll be laid up with um, creek stone as well as the chimneys are. And that will be an open firebox, open hearth there uh, for the bellows to work in. It will have a gable roof on it instead of a, a half gable or a shed type. And again, it will be a steep pitched roof as well. The gaps in between the logs are rather large. And there's a reason for that. Well, we won't chink this. Um, and of course the chinking is the material we place between the logs to make the structure more airtight. We'll leave this open because um, well, blacksmith shop's warm. And <laughs> if you're working and hammering steel in 90 degree, 100 degree weather, you want some breeze blowing through. Now that being said, if, um, if we're running through the winter and it starts to bother us, then we'll simply stick mud, uh, our clay and straw in between it, rather than use mortar like the cabins have. Uh, that way we can, in the summer, just poke it back out with a stick, go back to open air type of uh, structure. Okay, so that is pretty much what we've covered in our, our first video here. So again, as I mentioned at the beginning, what we really want to encourage people to do, if, if any of this was even remotely interesting or you found it beneficial, and you said, hey, I want to learn more about what you did there. You showed something here. I want to see what that's got going on in this area or this specific spot. Then use the comments section below. And we'll use those comments and, we'll, and say, okay, next time I come over to shoot, we're going to try to highlight this information. We're going to detail this process. And, and again, we have the luxury of being close by, so we can do that on a regular basis. But also, uh, be sure to subscribe. If you hit the subscribe button below, that way you're going to get a notification to say, hey, Red Tool House posted another video. Uh, be sure to check it out. Right. And again, this is all going to be based upon feedback. If you guys feel that this information isn't as pertinent, uh, then, then maybe we won't do as much. But we, we really want your guys' feedback. We want this to be a viewer-driven video series. And like I said, this guy is a wealth of information. He's, he's too humble to tell you, but he's been used on uh, national documentaries, weapons experts, those type of things for all period corrects. So he is a wealth of information. He well, can, thank you. Thank he, you. Can spend, he can spend days telling us stuff about this. So there's More all, than you'd want to hear. <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds of really neat things that we can learn uh, from Thad that, uh, A, is history, so it'd be a good history lesson for us, but I think would really dovetail into some of the things that we as homesteaders want to do in a modern time. So, um, again, be sure to check back, subscribe, give us a like again so other people can find us and spread the word. We appreciate it. And everybody, yeah. take care. Take care.